We're now joined by Shanique Holmes, who's Program Director of Workforce Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Good to see you, Shanique. Good to see you, Steve. Let's break this down. People often lump uh, diversity, equity, um, inclusion all together. Let's take them in pieces. Diversity, your definition of it, not just at the Port Authority, but for any large organization or any organization. Sure. So diversity is reflecting the communities that you serve. So it's people from all different backgrounds, different experiences, different ed education levels, uh, sort of bringing all of their um, dynamic backgrounds to the organization and the organization valuing from it. Yeah, well said. And by the way, as we do this program on the 7th of February, this will, I'll be dating myself, but the uh, United States Supreme Court, there have been 118 members of the United States Supreme Court that have been uh, not just nominated, but approved. 115 of them are white men. I would not, that would not be diversity, I would argue, in most people's minds. So that's diversity. Let's deal with the question of inclusion. Mm -hmm. So inclusion is really all of those individuals from the various backgrounds that we mentioned coming to the workplace and feeling like they, their voice matters, their opinion, their perspective matters, and that their, uh, their contribution to the organization is of tremendous value. Could you push this a little bit, an a concrete example of that? What does it look like? Sure. So coming to a department where um, I have a different background than others, as you mentioned uh, in your example, maybe all white men are in that specific example. But I feel like because I'm a black woman and my unique experience and how I was brought up in my education level, I have a different way of seeing maybe the very same project, let's say. And so I bring that lens. And so maybe our customer base has grown because of that. Uh, because I'm able to provide that background and that experience uh, on, in different work scenarios. And let me say the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, one of the many supporters of what we do. And I know that there are, if I'm not mistaken, there are 7,000 people employed by the Port Authority. That's correct. So, so when it comes to the issue of equity in an organization, whether it's the Port Authority or any other large organization, how do you work to ensure equity? workplace equity? So equity is really looking at, uh, again, you know, the opportunity for those individuals to feel like they're, like they can have the experience and they can aspire to reach the goals that they have for themselves, their careers, their job skills have developed just as they had planned it um, within an organization, regardless of the background that they have. So let me ask you, sometimes there are things that happen in the news. Well, they happen in life and they're reported in the news. And so the murder of George Floyd on camera, in front of the world, the, the case that preceded, uh, who, that followed up, and we saw what happened to those officers. Question, what impact did the George, George Floyd murder have on the work of you and your colleagues? Tremendous impact. So immediately after the murder of George Floyd, particularly at our organization, the leadership, our executive director, Rick Cotton, our uh, chairman, Kevin O'Toole, they instituted what they called the Leadership Steering Committee, which were 10 very senior individuals across the entire organization uh, to really take a look at race dynamics within the organization. So as part of that effort, uh, those 10 individuals, they heard from about a third of the workforce. They offered listening sessions and opportunities for people to engage, uh, to hear what their thoughts were about race dynamics and what they thought about, in particular, that situation having to do with uh, George Floyd and how it resonated with, with many people. Uh, and so as a result of that, we heard quite a few people say and employees share that they wanted to see change and that they wanted to do some things um, uh, to help the organization to evolve and to um, bridge the gap when it came to policies and practices that the or organization had engaged in. So the Leadership Steering Committee worked with a number of employee volunteers to come up with 25 separate initiatives that have been implemented and that are in the process of being implemented uh, to this very day. And so there are things such as new diversity and inclusion and unconscious bias training uh, for leaders and managers to help managers and leaders to understand, you know, what it's like uh, and the tools that they need to uh, manage and lead diverse teams and diverse uh, employee groups um, to mitigate unconscious bias where there may be, you know, unconscious bias dynamics. Can, um, can I take, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting, Shanique. You've used the term unconscious bias a few times. 
Could you differentiate between unconscious bias and bias? So, so unconscious bias is really, uh, again, unique perspectives that we all bring to the table um, based on our background, our upbringing, perhaps things that we've seen in the news, social media. Uh, and oftentimes, many of us, if not all of us, will have a uh, an experience that we will uh, have a quick decision or a quick uh, response to, right, which is called sort of an unconscious bias. Um, so something that's kind of uh, not something that we're necessarily aware of all the times, but we have over time developed a response rate or a way of responding to certain people or dynamics uh, based on our experiences that we've had over a very long period of time. So that would be something that's called unconscious bias. Conscious bias would be just deliberate, you know, decision-making against, for or against something. Before I let you go, why is this work around diversity, equity, and inclusion so personal for you? It's personal because, um, you know, I grew up in a situation where um, my father was experienced something that was not positive. Um, he was he was injured, quite frankly, uh, because of something uh, that he uh, a place that he was where others felt that he did not belong uh, being because African American of man because of his race. That's correct. And so it's very important to me um, to ensure that I constantly make others aware, that I help them to develop, that I bring, uh, I serve as a, uh, a conduit where necessary for leadership and for employees and help uh, bring them along and help them to work together and advance a specific cause, an organization, uh, and uh, continue, to, continue to advance in the space. Shanique Holmes is a program director of Workforce Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, Ms. Holmes, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it, Shanique. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Steve. You got it. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by PSENG, the Northward Center, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Atlantic Health System, Investors Bank, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Fidelco Group, Delta Dental of New Jersey, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network, and by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was two. It's hard to grow up with CF. But I have an awesome care team at Goryeb Children's Hospital, helping me do the things I want to do, like play lacrosse. And now I've been recruited to play in college. Where you go for pediatric care matters. Atlantic Health System, because every moment is a moment that matters.